You know when I say to you, God, am I glad to see you. I am being dead serious. I sincerely appreciate your patronage. Thank you kindly, my friends. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Tuesday. It is August 8th. Now, we're going to do the same thing today as we do in every show. We're going to go hunting for stocks under 5 bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. Sounds sweet, doesn't it? Now, I do things a little differently looking for these hot penny stocks. I go directly to the charts first. I'm looking for a chart that has heat, a lot of volume coming in, a breakout setup, something that says I'm ready to run. Then I go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for a catalyst. And I show you a lot of charts that have heat. Predominantly, you see the atypical breakout chart. No, you're not going to find that if you look it up on Google. That's my own terminology because we look at it so often, it seemed to need a name. That is that 200-day SMA coming down fast and furious and finally leveling out. Price is way down underneath the 200. Well, when it starts to go flat, the price sees an opportunity to get out. And it gets right up underneath that 200, jumps on top of it, and runs. And the reason I show these to you, well, one, they're easy to find. But two... These are the setups that are most probable to break out. And when they do break out, you get some serious runs on them. But there's a lot of different chart setups that have heat. And we're going to look at a few of those today. First stock we're going to take a look at, we've looked at before. Just here very recently, July 31st. This is Appie Inc., ticker APYP. Since we've looked at her, she's gone up almost 400%. Yeah! just since July 31st. And I think there's more to get. I darn sure do. APYP, she finished today at almost four cents and she fell, this is after market, these numbers have changed. It was just one and a half percent. Now she has fallen almost 7%. She's on the middle tier, the QB. This means she has to have her financials audited. That's good, that's validated information. They've got a CPA doing the accounting. So we get fundamentals. We can weigh the company up. Are they in good or bad position? With Pinks, you only get disclosures. They're disclosing numbers to you from the management, not a CPA. We have no idea what that means. So here, we have got audited financials on the middle tier of the OTC. Plus, they've got more verified information, verified profile, and a transfer agent verified. I'm always telling you to look for these two. This is a lot of information that's being validated behind the scenes. And the problem with the OTC, we don't get a lot of that. So between validated financials and validated information, this is looking pretty good. So what is Appia all about? Well, they tell us here that Appia Inc.'s wholly owned subsidiary is SleepX. This is an Israeli research and development company that has developed a unique product for monitoring and treating sleep apnea and snoring. The technology is protected by several international patents and the company plans to start serial production in 2022. And that's why we looked at it. They have this hot product. It's like a wristband and you just wear that. Instead of a mask or some tubes you got to put in your nose, you just wear this like a watch band. Well, this does more than just monitor your vitals. It also monitors and records your snoring. And this is attached to a phone app. So all that information is in real time sent to an AI program that determines a file feedback message to send to you. And it sends it to the wristwatch and it causes this code to be vibrated on your watch a certain intensity, a certain duration, and it's got different codes, and it teaches your brain to teach you how to sleep properly, the right position, the right inhale and exhale, all that sort of stuff. I think it's a hot product. Well, it didn't do very good since November, so they've had a change of management, which is when we looked at it, and now management has been streamlining and getting things ready to go. It really does look hot to me, folks. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Ah, it was a rough day on the market. I, I will say that. She dropped over 50% of her regular volume. On an average, she's been doing just a little over a half a million, 585,000. Today, she only did 232,000. Share structure for Appia, 
All right, uh, outstanding share count is up there at just under a quarter billion, 240 million shares. The insiders have the lion's share of that, 186 million. That only leaves us with about 53 million if these numbers are correct. 53 million isn't a bad float. Not every stock has to be a low float. And that's not extremely high. 53 is not a bad float. Financials for Appia. We have nothing on the annual and we have nothing on the quarterly, which is why we were looking at it, because they have a hot product that was already launched and they brought in a new guy who has actually been working with the company since January, but he was only an advisor then. And now he's the CEO. <laughs> wow, what a change. So I was expecting things to happen and we did have a new piece of news come out, which we're gonna take a look at here. Uh, let's see, we have a new filing here too. They tell us here that on July 19th, the company entered into a subscription agreement with a qualified investor to sell them just a little over 13 million shares for gross proceeds of $133,000. Now that's not a lot and I probably wouldn't have even mentioned it except they had more to say. This investor is not legally obligated. However, they have informally indicated that they would invest during the third quarter of 2023, that's right now, an additional $266,000 buying shares of our stock. So we're looking at another quarter million, but there's more. I feel like a TV commercial. Subject to the satisfactory operation of the snoring treatment device as determined by the investor. I guess he's gonna take it home and see if it works on his wife. The investor informally indicated that they would invest an additional $950,000 within a nine month period. So you've got somebody here who's got money. He's given us a small chunk. He's willing to give us a bigger chunk. And he says, I got a real big chunk if you can get me some sleep. <laughs> so we've got that going on. We do have a big investor right now. Any other ones here? Uh, no, I don't believe there was. I think we just need to jump into that news now. And that be right here. Now it was back here in November that they launched their product, which is called Dream It. That is the wristband and they've got a SleepX app that you just hook it up to. Then they got a patent awarded to them for their diagnosing sleep quality. And this is important folks. Patents are little fortresses that protect your intellectual property, your brain power, the stuff you came up with. This says nobody else can use it without your permission. So you don't have to create your competitors with your own technology. And then they got that new CEO, Addie Schemer. He used to be the advisor, bumped up to CEO in just a few months. And then the most current news that came out just a couple of days ago, Appier announces equity financing transaction to accelerate commercial launch, which is what we need. We need to get these products out there and being bought. The transaction is expected to streamline capital structure and ultimately result in the elimination of all company debt. That's fantastic. The financing is expected to help accelerate the commercial launch of the company's DreamIt Biofeedback Snoring Treatment Wristband, which is used in combination with its SleepX app. Additionally, the financing is expected to support additional regulatory activities related to the DreamIt Pro Wristband and the SleepX Pro app for the treatment of sleep apnea. In connection with the transaction, the strategic investors plan to purchase all the outstanding company notes from the prior note holders. They're buying up all the debt, substantially extending their maturity period. They're gonna give the company more time to pay this debt off and amended the conversion price into a fixed conversion price instead of a discounted variable rate mechanism. They're going to lock in the price they owe instead of the interest constantly bouncing around. In addition to that, Mr. Boris Melodowski, the control person of the company, the one man that owns the absolute most shares of the company, has committed to lock all his shares for at least the next three years, unless required in connection with a <laughs> potential uplisting to the New York Stock Exchange. All right, I'd be willing for him to sell something if they were gonna uplist. So 
we've got a lot of things happening here. We have people investing money into the company. We have debt that is being bought up, extending our payment time, uh, not charging us more. And we've got the biggest shareholder promising not to sell any of his shares for the next three years. So we're not going to have a pump and dump. This is what makes it safe to ride these big surges. The people who own the most are the ones that can cause the avalanches, those huge sales. We're just dealing with people like you and me. They just keep it bouncing like this, and it is bouncing beautifully. So let's go take a look at that chart now, and I'll show you where the 400 came from. And Well, it's kind of hard to predict where she can go when she's shooting for the stars. Let's do some charting now on Think or Swim. This is a free trading platform I got when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. So can you, and it's free. So we are looking at APYP Appia Inc. This is a six month, four hour chart with a few days missing. This is the way we saw it when I introduced it to you on July 31st. A perfect atypical breakout chart. That's what you wanna see when you're doing your searches. Price, way up underneath the 200. Both of them coming down like a ski slope. And then you see the price start pushing up towards that 200. And we'd like to see all that volume come in there as well. Well, that's the way it was when we looked at it. You want to see the way it looks now? Ta-da! Oh, man. She rocketed, folks. She jumped down here from about, uh, we were just over a penny. Just over a penny. And she had a high here of uh, just under five cents. So there was almost a 5% run since July 31st. You can see she is riding on that nine day SMA, pushing hard. She looks very strong and she is still creating higher lows. Still, even right there. Our oscillators are very strong, but there's a little bit of cool back right now. Volume was very strong, but it too is now starting to cool off just a little bit. Taking a look at our 20 day, one hour view. So there's your run. This is the 28th, the 29th, the 31st, and right there. That's where we looked at her folks, right there on the one hour chart. She had just broke out floating on her nine day SMA. And you can see she just continued floating on that nine day SMA, getting higher and higher, ripping a couple days ago up to that 485, fell back, right to where she started, not to be scared, and continued climbing. Now, on the other chart, it didn't look perfect. That nine day SMA was way up there and the 20 was way down here. That was a big spread. But look here, she was slowly climbing, but more or less going sideways. She could have easily fell after this bubble. Instead, she's been maintaining her hold, her strength, biding time, waiting for support, waiting for help. And here comes the 20. And look how she leaned on it. <sighs> as soon as it got there. Where you been, dude? So now she's bouncing off of it. Everything looks decent right here. I'm not saying it looks perfect, but this company's got a lot of power right now. The oscillators show she is tired. She is cooling off at this very moment. Now, I'm not saying she can't come down to the 50. That is a possibility. We could easily take our Fibonacci here, folks. Where is that at? Right there. Poke the beginning of your surge, poke the top of the surge, find the 50% mark right there. I want to see if the price stays above that. If it stays above that, chances are it is most inclined to climb. If it comes underneath the halfway mark, chances are it's going to want to fall down to the strongest SMA. Right now we are in great position. She's way up here sitting on it. You can see that. And now we've got help. The 20 day SMA has jumped into the picture to help support her. Get rid of this while we look at the five day, five minute view. That's not a bad chart. Low bubbles in this corner. It's always a good start. We are here at a uh, penny point two and she's on top of her 50. She bounced off the 50 once there, bounced off it here, laid on it, had a rubber ball bounce. That is, she went underwater and then surfaced on top. It must've been a hard throw. <laughs> because she went underwater again, came back up. And now she's wrestling again. Now, this does not look dangerous to me. I expect her to wrestle with the 50. She is going sideways, but what's got my concern are all these new SMAs popping onto the board. 
we've got a 200 day haul and a 200 day SMA. Both take 200 days and culminate all their prices into an average price and make a point on the chart. The haul puts more credence on current prices, which is why it's normally closer to the price. And we've seen a lot of penny stocks paying heed to the 200 day haul. But what we also see is when the 200 day SMA comes into the picture, a lot of times the price will gravitate to it. Doesn't matter if it's above or below the price, the price just goes to it. Doesn't necessarily stay there, a lot of times it does. Sometimes it'll just tag it and take off. This has been ignoring it, it hasn't touched it yet, but this is all one day, isn't it? No, we got three days there. May not go near it, may be hugging up to that 200 day haul. Our oscillators, uh, they're cold. Right now, they are cold. So, the chart on the four hour, it's ripping. The one hour looks good. The five minute doesn't look bad. She's gonna have to cool off every now and then. We gotta give her room to dip. There were no dips on that four hour chart. And she's getting this new product, which doesn't smother your face like an octopus. Just wear it on your wrist. I'll bet you a lot of people, a lot of people are going to be interested in this. And when they can find the right distributor, the right avenue to market this, it is going to be hot. But right now, we are looking for a continuation, riding the momentum. The wave hasn't hit the beach yet. Get on it if you can. Our next penny stock comes from the NASDAQ. And I'll bet most of you are familiar with this company, just not right off the bat. This is ticker J-O-A-N. The name of the company, Joanne Inc. Nothing? What if I was to say Joanne Fabrics? Ah, most of you have heard of that. Well, that's who we're talking about here. A company that's been around for over 80 years and has got a chain of retail stores across 49 states. Now, the truth of the matter is we are looking at this because of the chart. Solely. There is no catalyst. They haven't opened up a new store. They're not launching new products, nothing like that. Matter of fact, the only news they have had is they released their most recent financials and they weren't great. They did not meet the investors' expectations and you can see it by the charts. They pushed that price down to a low bubble, an all time low bubble. For as long as this company's been on the market, the price has never been this low before. And that's our opportunity. When a company that has value, when they're generating big revenues, like this one is, when they have lots of assets, like this one does, that low bubble is nothing but a flashing for sale sign. Come and get me while I'm cheap. And she has been bouncing off of that low bubble, breaking out in an atypical breakout chart. It really does look juicy, folks. But there is nothing over here to push it. It's all on the chart. It's all about that low bubble. So Joan, she finished today at $1.49 and just a little over 12% gains. So I told you what Joan does, but let me give you a little more information about them. For 80 years, Joan has inspired creativity in the hearts, hands, and minds of its customers. From a single storefront in Cleveland, Ohio, the nation's category leader in sewing and fabrics and one of the fastest growing competitors in the arts and crafts industries has grown to include 831 store locations across 49 states and a robust online e-commerce business. With the goal of helping every customer find their creative happy place, Jones serves as a convenient single source for all the supplies, guidance, and inspiration needed to achieve any project or passion. So what was the relative volume around the company today without any catalysts? Well, look at that. She jumped almost 50% without any catalysts, going from 618,000 up to 910,000. Share structure for Joan. They don't give us any information here except the outstanding share count, which is down at 41 million. Not a bad share count. Our float's going to be under that somewhere. I'm not going to complain. Financials for Joan. They're making money, folks. Over the last four years, you can see they've been doing more than $2 billion. Sometimes a lot more, sometimes a little more. But they've been generating revenues on a regular basis, keeping about half of it, keeping over a billion dollars every single year. Looking at their quarterly, well, there's their downfall right there. 478 million 
compared to last quarters of 692 million. And they got upset about that and they dropped the price. But as you can see, they're still in profit mode. It's not a dangerous position. It's just not liked by the investors. Looking at the disclosures for Joan, we do have an 8K here that we need to take a look at. They tell us here that on July 20th, the company received written notice that the company is not in compliance with the requirement to maintain a minimum market cap of at least 50 million. $50 million for the market cap. We find that over here. Hey, look at that. We're over it. We are at 54 million. Market cap is simple to figure out. You just take the number of outstanding shares and you multiply it times the price. That gives you your market cap. Well, since she started bouncing off of that all time low, she has got her market cap up. So we're fixing that problem right now. So the last thing we need to take a look at is the news. And really there is none. I told you they got no catalyst. The only news I found interesting over here was that the uh, stock nosedived after they reported their Q1 results. And that's what caught my attention. Now understand, I don't like to play bounce backs, recoveries. I will on occasion, but not really. And I'm not thinking of this as a recovery or a bounce back. The company's not in trouble. They're making money. They have assets. They just had a bad quarter financial. I see this as a bargain, an opportunity for people to get shares cheap in a strong company. And I don't know how long it's going to push up, but it's still pushing up right now. And I'm going to share it with you. Well, let's go look at the chart then. Even at a quick glance, you can tell that is a very hot chart. This is Joanne Inc, ticker J-O-A-N. This is a six month, four hour view with our high bubble six months ago in November of $6.11. Had some volatility as she was falling all the way down to the slow bubble on the very last day of July of 79 cents. Now it's off of that low bubble, the all time low bubble of 79 cents. She has started a different trend. She is now pushing up. Now I'm going to grab my regression channel, poke that day, drag it over. You don't have to put it anywhere. I can do this with my eyes closed. It automatically puts the channel where you need it. I'm going to extend that to the right. There you go. So you can see once she bounced off that low bubble, she changed her trend. She is now climbing across every single SMA. Not a whole lot going on here. Itty bitty tiny bars. And then all of a sudden she ripped. Look at the size of that bar. Look at the next bar after it. She was excited to get over that 200. That's what she wanted to do. She came down one of those rubber ball bounces and came right back on the surface, bounced off the surface, and she is running now on her nine day SMA, breaking through the top of this channel, showing us that she wants to climb. She wants to get out. She's banging on it over and over again. Volume has been real good these last five days with the least of it today. Oscillators look good. PPO is pushing up, MACD has had a bounce and pushing up, and our RSI is above 55, just under 58 right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Uphill trend, she started down here at a low of $1.04, went sideways for quite a while, and boy, look, she bounced not only on the bottom of the channel, but the 200, and she bounced on it hard. She went from a buck nine to $1.63, and fell right back here. There's that water ball bounce. Bounced a few times and now she's climbing, stair stepping up. She's come back down, bounced on the 50 day SMA, and now she is sitting on top of her 20 with the nine right there with her. This looks like it wants to get on top of this support and run. That would be another breakout. Oscillators, PPO is pushing up along with the MACD, looking decent. Our RSI has cooled down to 55. That's as low as I like to see the RSI. Five day, five minute. So there was that huge bounce going from the bottom of the channel to the top of the channel and then back down to the bottom. And then she worked her way up to the top of the channel again, broke out, hit in a high bubble, came back down to the center of this channel. And now she's bouncing in this arena and she's looking like she wants to jump off this 200 and start to climb again. Our oscillators are all about ready to change direction right now. They were all going sideways and down and everything is starting to turn up right now. 
So, I like Joan. Not that she has any big catalysts in the news. Normally, I like to find a catalyst. But an all-time low bubble on a money-generating company is a catalyst. I don't know how far this can go. It all depends on how valuable they think this company is. J-O-A-N. Watch her. See what happens. You may be surprised. Last penny stock we're taking a look at, we've looked at twice before. May 10th and February 4th. This is AFFU, Affluence Corporation. Now, there were some gains to be taken after we looked at her, about 20%. But the thing is with this chart is she's had some huge breakouts. But the breakouts weren't under control. They were explosions. They were rockets. They surged from underneath the 200, through the 200, way up high, and then came crashing back down under the 200. She's done that twice. Well, she's about ready to break out again, but not like that. She is setting it all up. She's got everything in place, all the SMAs, the volume, the price curving up, the 200 in place. It looks beautiful. And they've got current news. They are making deals. They are getting more business. So everything looks like it should break out. So AFFU, she finished the day just under two cents, and she did drop about a quarter percent today. She's on the pink tier, she is current, and she's got some validated information. We've got our verified profile and our transfer agent verified as well. So she's got that going for her. So what is this company about? Well, they primarily right now are working with smart cities. They tell us here that Affluence Corporation is a diversified technology company focused on the innovative software solutions that capitalize on the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and 5G technologies. We are investing in mid-market businesses to create a cohesive unit which brings together technology for the next generation. And we'll get more information about what it is exactly they're doing when we look at the news. So, relative volume for the company. Oh, whoa, that's like 60% drop. I wasn't expecting that. She went from about 405,000 shares all the way down to 123,000 shares today. You don't do breakouts with volume like that. Share structure for AFFU. Oh, I'm having a deja vu moment here. What a memory. I can see this in my memory from May. The last time we were here, she had unrestricted shares of 40 million. Now, the unrestricted shares is what I call the float. You've got your outstanding share count here of about 600 million. Restricted shares are what the insiders own, management, hedge funds, institutions. They've got about 500 million here. Subtract this from the outstanding, and that gives you your float, which they call the unrestricted shares because they're allowed to be on the open market. So now we're up to 106 million. I'm not crazy about that float. I mean, it's not as bad as some, but we're starting to get up there now. Looking at the financials for AFFU. Well, those are great. Those are dandy. Every single year has been bigger than the year before by a nice increase, jumping from $0 to 201000 just under a million in 2021 to almost $1.5 million in 2022. And they're getting to keep most of that money. They got to keep 1.2 million of that. Looking at the quarterly, well, I told you they had better than expected revenues. Now, I don't know what the last quarter was. Don't know why it's not here. But we can see she jumped from 453 clear up to 887. That's almost a 100% increase. And their profits are growing too. So things are looking good, as they stated. Checking out her disclosures. No, we got no disclosures here, so let's jump on into that news. They don't have a lot of news here, but they do give us some good information. First off, they told us back in May that the company announced record first quarter revenues and record net income. That you want to see, revenues growing. Then at the end of uh, June, the company's One Mind Technologies, that's one of their subsidiaries, awarded a multi-million dollar contract for Smart City Project in Saudi Arabia's capital. Ooh, the capital city. Affluence Corporation, a leader in smart city software and Internet of Things technology, announced today that it has received a multi-year, multi-million dollar contract to provide its best-in-class smart city software solutions to a high-profile smart city project for the city of Riyadh 
in Saudi Arabia. Uh, the contract was secured by one of our premier technology partners, and there are several more contracts associated with this project that will be awarded over the next 12 months. Woohoo! There will be a formal signing ceremony amongst all three parties in the next 60 days. There's a window of opportunity that will bring to light the magnitude of this contract. We're going to get more information. One Mind Technologies has already shipped the software for phase one of the project and it will be included in the company's Q2 financials. And those are due any time. So we're going to see more revenues coming in. And that other piece of news that we need to take a look at came out July 10th. Affluence Corporation's One Mind Technology expands its South America through a partnership with Globe SA. The company announced today that its wholly owned subsidiary, One Mind Technologies, has increased its sales presence in South America through its partnership with Globe SA, one of the premier value-added services, distribution, and integrators in South America. The partnership with Globe has already started paying dividends. They tell us here that Globe has included One Mind's Hypervisor NG into a very large, high-profile smart city project in Chile. And we were able to recognize revenues from that project in Q2. Are they going to show up in the financial as well? Of particular note is that this project incorporated the software as a service capabilities of Hypervisor NG. Our long-term strategy is to have a mix of enterprise software and subscription revenue to build a more predictable revenue stream. So they're in South America, Chile. They're in the capital city of Saudi Arabia. And I don't know where else they're at. But these are places that have money and are building their cities up. So the company's got revenues coming in. They got more business coming in. And the chart is set up properly this time. Let's take a look at this crazy chart for AFFU. This is Affluence Corporation's six-month, four-hour view. All the way back here six months ago, she was underneath the 200, except for this crazy breakout where she just surged from way down here through the 200 all the way up. This was over 200%. Then she came crashing right back down. And then we had another run, over 200% again. This one took a little bit of time, but she came crashing back down again. Now, this is the first time we looked at her. This was back on February 4th, and there was about a 20% jump a couple of days after we looked at her. And then we looked at her on May 10th, and again, there was a little jump after we looked at her, about 20%. But after this, she fell down to this exaggerated low bubble with this long wick down to 0071. But really, the low is right there. That's where everything is bouncing off of. Now, what you see here is a wedge. She has been bouncing off of the top here and riding up this channel right there. And she's getting pinched right now. And everything is coming together in one intersection. We got the top right here and our 200. The 200 is coming down to us. All the SMAs underneath are coming up right now. And the price is pinched right between the middle. This is like a tube of toothpaste. You squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. And it comes out. Does it shoot up or down? You look at your oscillators. That tells you what direction is going to happen. We are bouncing. Boing, 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 uphill. And right now she is pointing up. Our MACD is doing the exact same thing. RSI is very cool and plants it at 53 right now. But that is a perfect setup. She's getting tighter and tighter. Coming down to our 20-day, one-hour view. So there's that channel. That wedge, it's getting tighter and tighter. She's bouncing inside it. She's broke out once. She's come down hard with that rubber ball bounce. Broke out again. This time she kind of stayed on top of the channel and she's right there. What we need is some volume to come in. Volume would make a lot of difference here. Our oscillators are still looking good. I'm not going to say they're strong, but they're definitely not weak and they are on an up push right now. All of our SMAs are tight, but they're in the right order. There's the 9, there's the 50, there's our 200 down at the bottom. Everything looks good. Looking at our 5-day, five 5-minute. Five All right, she is going sideways. There's no doubt about that. She's just stuck in this arena, so we're waiting for the breakout. But look, our technicals are showing she's on an up 
push. She is pushing up. We've got our blue line above the pink, just like we do here. Everything is on the right side. And our RSI is very cool down at 52. It could be a couple days. This could need a little more time to set up, but it looks promising to me, folks. AFFU. I think she's got a very good likelihood of breaking out and climbing. May not be a surge, just a nice steady climb. The other stocks we looked at just like this deserve some more due diligence. They deserve your time if you're going to give them your money. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.